Grant Hill is joining us, Hall of Famer, Team USA Basketball Managing Director, seven-time NBA All-Star, won a couple of titles at Duke, and now you put together Team USA. Good to see you again. Uh, how much pressure do you feel with this team putting it together? You know, you, you feel pressure. And I think in part, Dan, it's just really the incredible legacy of USA basketball over the last 50 years. Uh, with that, the success, there comes expectations. Uh, so, yeah, there's pressure. This is not, uh, I think I've said this before, this is not ceremonial in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the great thing is, is that our players, um, our coaches are accustomed to pressure. They've been in pressure moments. They understand the enormity of this uh, Olympic event, and uh, they welcome and embrace the pressure that exists with this team and the expectations. What were you thinking when uh, Team USA was uh, down 16 to South Sudan, even though it was considered a friendly? I thought this was great for our team. I thought uh, to be able to sort of feel the pressure, uh, you know, was important. Uh, we had some really good moments in our first three exhibition games. We didn't play that great in the last two against one against South Sudan and against Germany. Um, but I'm glad our guys got a chance to experience it. You know, Greg Popovich has a saying that you always want to have the appropriate fear of your opponents, and particularly in international basketball and international competition. You know, you may look across uh, the, the court and, and see guys, well, you know, they're role players in the NBA or, or, or what have you. But in FIBA basketball, um, they play at another level and it's a different style of game. It's officiated differently. Um, and so I think for us to feel that and we can talk about it, we can, you know, we can certainly watch it on film, but to feel how they play, to feel the passion and the spirit I think was important for our guys and will help us as we start things uh, here on Sunday. Explain to the audience the difference in regular basketball, NBA basketball, and international play. Well, you know, first of all, it's a shorter game. And so there's fewer possessions. Uh, so every possession is golden. Uh, I think in the NBA, we tend to, to beat teams with great individual play. Uh, in the FIBA style, if you will, and a lot of these international teams, they beat you with great ball movement, player movement. They may not have the one-on-one -on -one players, but it's the continuity, it's the multiple movements. So, you know, the discipline required to, to guard those multiple movements. Uh, How is, is it officiated, with, though, differently, you said? Yeah. Oh, no, no question. I think there's greater physicality uh, in the FIBA game than in the NBA. Although I thought this last season, particularly at the end, uh, the league made some adjustments to allow for greater physicality. But, you know, all, most of these guys on our team are stars. They're superstars on their team and in the league. And, you know, they're, they're uh, accustomed to maybe getting calls uh, in the NBA. Well, a lot of those calls uh, aren't called in FIBA. If you know, if you were to make an assumption, you may say in the NBA, um, it's officiated sort of in favor of the offensive player. In FIBA, it's officiated in favor of the defensive player. And so some of those just subtleties there, nuances of the game, it's an adjustment period. And the exhibition season, the five games, um, even the last two, were so important and so critical to just – not only feel it, but also just train our minds to prepare for what we're going to see here uh, in Paris. We're talking to Grant Hill. He helped put the uh, team together, Team USA Managing Director. All right, explain the philosophy of how you build the team that Jalen Brown didn't make the roster, but his teammate Derek White does. What goes into that decision? Yeah, I'm glad <laughs> you brought that up. Um, so... You know, we, we we went to training camp and we didn't have KD. KD was out, Kevin Durant, um, you know, sort of coming back from a calf injury. And then Jason Tatum was late for arrival. He didn't show up the first two or three days. So, you know, we ended up having to sort of play Anthony Davis and Bam Adebayo together. And we didn't know if that would work. I think going into camp, we thought, let's have three centers much like in 96 when we had Akeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, and Shaquille O'Neal, 
and we'll rotate. All three of them are different. They provide different things. And so we'll have sort of a three-headed monster at the center position. But what we found, because we didn't have the numbers those first few days, was that Bam Montebayo and Anthony Davis can really play well together on both ends of the floor. And at times might be our best defensive lineup. So we kind of stumbled upon something and we learned something about our group during the uh, during, you know, during those those four days in Vegas. And so when we pivoted off of, you know, off of Kawhi Leonard, we said, OK, we got a little bit of a log jam now at the four position. You know, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum. Uh, now Bam out of bio, all these guys can play the four and we envisioned them playing the four. And so, okay, let's not bring another guy who might play that three, four position in. Let's bring in someone now who can really give us great defense at the point of attack. That was also a priority for putting this team together, being able to pick up full court guard and pressure the point guards of opposing teams. And Drew Holiday might be the best in the world at doing this. But having some injuries that we had during camp, well, what happens if Drew gets hurt? You know, and so Derek White might be the second best in the world at point of attack defense. So um, that was sort of the thought process. But we really learned about our team those days in Vegas and discovered something with Bam Adebayo and Anthony Davis on the court together that we really weren't thinking about prior to our arrival in Vegas. Did you call Jalen Brown to tell him or explain this to him? I I spoke to his agent and, um, you know, I spoke to his agent. We, um, you know, I I, I don't know if that was before or after, uh, you know, things went out on Twitter. Uh, But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think this idea that there's a conspiracy theory, I always love a good conspiracy theory, but um, you know, it was it was really, truly a basketball decision. And these are tough decisions, you know, and but having gone through this uh, with the FIBA competition, um, you, you want to find the right balance and the right pieces on the court that that we needed. And not to say that he wouldn't have been good. There's a lot of guys you can go on a list of guys who are, are very capable and very, very, you know, very qualified. But, you know, for where we were, it was the right decision. And Derek White. Um, I think will help us as we pursue goal. I don't want to say how concerning, but how aware is Team USA with the evolvement of, like the best players in the NBA, probably the top five are not from the United States. They're from other countries. Um, I know this is, you know, primarily because of 92 with the Dream Team, and we're starting to see that. But, you know, there's a lot of great players. If you go down the, you know, with Serbia on Sunday with uh, Joker and Giannis, uh, I mean, Embiid is from another country, but playing for Team USA. Uh, Luca, I mean, go down. Shea Gilgis is from Canada. How aware are you of this talent being developed, and how does Team U or how does USA basketball keep up with that talent? Great question. I mean, the NBA has has really become a global game, as you said, because of that 92 team. I think almost 30 percent of the players in the NBA now are international players. So it speaks to the growth of the game all over the world. Um, You mentioned those guys. Thankfully, they're not all uh, in the same country, (laughs) you know. But, um, you know, there, there's there's an appropriate fear of of of, you know, of Serbia with Jokic, of Canada. Uh, with Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, and I, I do feel like there's a, a feeling like, you know, there's something to prove. Like we want to show that, you know, that we can still reign supreme. Um, and the guys have, have talked about it. And now they got to go out. Why and are they it. developing these players? Like what are they doing differently in the development of players that we're not doing in the United States? You know, I, 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 I don't know if there's a, a concrete answer to that. Um, I, I do think that, look, you're, you're, you're pulling now from uh, just a, 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 you know, a larger pool of, of players. I mean, if you're going to open up the game and, and popularize the game, then you're going to expect to have players from all over the world. Now, I will say in recent years, to your point, most of the NBA MVPs have been international. I think the last three or four of them have been. Um, And so, you know, 
we may have to take a look at our grassroots model and how we develop players. Um, or it just could be, you know, that was the trend. And the next 10 years, we'll get back to sort of having the, the, the premier sort of young, talented players, uh, dominant players in the NBA. But yeah, Jokic, Giannis, Luka, uh, Shea Gilgis, Alexander. I mean, those guys for the last few years have been perennial first team all NBAs. Uh, players and uh, and they deserved it. They played at an elite level. So I, I don't know if I have the answer as to why that is, um, but it's certainly the case and uh, certainly that we're all very much aware of. How strange is it to be looking at LeBron James still out there playing, the go-to guy for this team at his age, having played against well, him? Well, he was the go-to guy uh, in those two games. Now, <laughs> I don't know if, if 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 that'll be the case. I mean, I expect, you know, multiple guys will, will step up and play big. But, you know, LeBron has been fantastic from, from day one. And, you know, the first day of practice in Las Vegas, uh, you know, he had maybe 20 dunks uh, in practice. You know, he's 39 and a half years old, and he's dunking everything and probably showed up in the best shape. And the next day in the cafeteria, I told him, I said, LeBron, you know, when I was 39 and I played in the NBA, I, I looked at it as I had 20 good jumps for the entire season. And I didn't waste those jumps in practice. And you did 20 in one practice. And so, but he's been phenomenal. Uh, he's, you know, shown that he has an incredible will with his performance in our last two exhibition games. He's been a great leader. Uh, he's been just a model citizen and certainly a great ambassador for USA basketball team USA. And well, didn't you having, shut him down when you were in Phoenix? You were you were the guy who had to shut down LeBron. Was that? Do I remember that correctly? I was not the LeBron stopper. Oh, you were, um, you weren't. No, I guarded him, but I don't know if you could say <laughs> I shut him down. No. Oh, what a great assignment! You know, it's like uh, Grant, you get LeBron. It, it, you you could say that yes um, you know it, it, it wasn't great in the moment but um, but certainly what's great is that finally we're on the same team and um, you know we we've watched him certainly the whole world has seen uh, his greatness on display but to watch him up close and personal to see his consistency to see his professionalism to see his attitude his leadership um, it's even more impressive. And, um, and we're going to need that as we go on this journey here these next two weeks. You don't get a gold medal if Team USA gets a gold medal, do you? Uh, no, but I might create or make one for me if we do. Oh, okay. Even the coaches don't get a gold medal, right? It's just the players who get a gold medal? It, it's just the athletes, yes. Now, I, did, I do have one from 96, so I, that is one of my um, – Great joys that I, I was able to participate and win a gold medal. Okay, more important, the gold medal or a national title at Duke? Oh, wow. That's that's a great question. Um, I, I, probably the gold medal. I mean, the national title was great, and certainly I'm probably remembered more for that. But, you know, the Olympics don't come around often. And um, and so that was truly one of the highlights of my career, no uh, question. Uh, Duke in good hands with uh, Cooper Flagg? Cooper Flag, yes. I mean, it's the, the, the talented uh, group coming in, come, uh, the Kamal kid from uh, South Sudan. Was Cooper um, good enough to make the Olympic team? No, no. He had, I mean, he had a good day and he had some good moments. But um, yeah, I mean, he he he's he, he's going to have a great okay. college season, I hope. But I know he'll have a great NBA year or NBA season. But no, I mean, he 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 had a good day. He had a really good day, and uh, and that was documented on social media. People saw the clips, um, but he still has some growth to do, and I think he would acknowledge that as well. But, you know, he may be a guy that's in consideration in four years. We'll have to wait and see. But how close is he to being great? I think he is great. I mean, I think he is great. He'll be a great college player. I think his game may even resonate and translate better on the NBA stage. Uh, he's young. He's 17, so he's still learning. Uh, sometimes when you're young, you have no fear. You don't, you know, you don't even know you're supposed to be scared. Um, but he's got all the tools. He's got the mental makeup too. Um, he has, you know, some nasty in him. You know, he's not afraid. But why does it he, translate he, more to the NBA? You think than one year at Duke? 
Well, let me just say the college game is a little bit different. You know, the college game is, if anything, the college game might be a little bit more like the international game now. You know, it's 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 definitely more ball movement. You can zone. Um, so the space and the pace uh, and the freedom and all that that happens in the NBA game may be better suited for him. But I still expect him to have uh, a great season and lead Duke to a national championship. <laughs> great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us, Grant. All right, Dan. Thanks for having me. That's Grant Hill, Hall of Famer, and uh, won a couple of national titles at Duke and uh, Team USA. So, I, I mean, he said what I thought they were thinking of with Jalen Brown is they had a lot of players who were similar in what they did at that position. And Derek White's somebody that if he doesn't get any shots or he's not playing, nobody's going to be worried about it. He's going to be one of those guys of, what do you want me to do?